Faith. What is it? Being sure of our hope. Convinced of what we can't see. By faith, we understand the world was set in order at God's command. By faith, Abel offered God a greater sacrifice than Cain. And for his faith, God commended him as righteous. By faith, Noah trusted God and constructed an ark for the deliverance of his family. By faith, Abraham was willing to sacrifice Isaac, his only son, believing God would still fulfill his promises. By faith, Moses chose to be mistreated with the people of God rather than enjoy sin's fleeting pleasure. By faith, God's chosen nation crossed the Red Sea on dry ground and praised him as it swallowed up the Egyptians. By faith, Rahab the prostitute escaped destruction because she welcomed the spies in peace. Time will fail me if I tell of Gideon, David, and the prophets. By faith, they administered justice, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire. But others were imprisoned, murdered, and wandered in deserts, mountains, and openings in the earth. We are surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses. So get rid of every weight, of every sin, and run, run with endurance the race set before us. your eyes fixed on Jesus. He is the champion and guide of our faith. For promised joy, he endured the cross, thought nothing of its shame, and having risen again, has been handed his deserved glory at the right hand of the throne of God.
Why don't we put a strong hand clap for the Lord together tonight, amen, for he is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Why should I fear? Hallelujah. Why should I fear? For the evidence. Hallelujah, Jesus, the evidence. Why should I fear? Why should I fear? Hallelujah. For the evidence, For the evidence of what Jesus, Jesus has done. It's here. It's in your heart. So why, so why should I fear? Why should I fear? Hallelujah, Jesus. You know, one of the things that I love about being apostolic, amen, is that the Word of God speaks so truthfully, amen, so honestly that you and I don't have to fear, amen. The evidence of the things of God are here written in the Word of God for you and I to gaze upon, to look upon, to read, that the Word of God may inhabit its place in our heart and begin to transform our mind, our spirit, amen. The very aspect of the way that we think and the way that we respond to people, the Word of God in all of its entirety when it is allowed to penetrate, hallelujah, the walls of our heart. I want to tell you, God steps in and begins to change and rearrange some things in your life that you no longer try to resist God anymore, but you're willing to surrender because the evidence of who He is and what He has done, it's plainly seen throughout all the world. When I look to the skies, I can't help but think about the God that I serve. How he causes, amen, the air to shift and turn. How he causes the circuits of the earth to spin. He causes the bird to raise up early and begin to sing its song. The waves crash against the rocks and begin to sing out loud to the God of creation. Oh, even the trees as the wind begins to move they begin to sway in motion worshiping the king of kings oh and the lord of lords and all of creation cries out to god why shouldn't you and i why shouldn't you and i lift up our voice and begin to tell this world oh there may be pain and heaviness that have been brought to my life things didn't work out the way i thought they should have this week my plans didn't go according to the way i wanted them to but i can still come inside of this house and lift up my hands though be they be wounded i can lift up my hands Though they be broken, I can lift up my voice. Though it may be not well heard by some, when I'm in the presence of God, I know things can happen. I know lives can change. I know life can be different. Amen. When I get into the presence of the Lord, hallelujah. Oh, that's what I long for on Friday night. More than silver and gold. More than the applaud of men. Oh, I desire to be in the presence of my King. He abayara si tiri oro boyara siya. He kiri oro boyara si tiri oro boyaha. Oh, hallelujah. Miracle signs and wonders can happen in this place. Oh, I don't have to be afraid. Oh, I don't have to fear for the evidence. Oh, hallelujah. Why should I fear? Oh, the evidence 
the evidence proclaims his power. The evidence demonstrates his love. to be afraid tonight oh the evidence you may be feeling lonely but you know what you're not alone you don't have to be afraid Jesus said the evidence oh the evidence hallelujah Jesus Hallelujah. That powerful name of Jesus is the complete revelation of God. It is in that name that you and I find comfort. Amen. That name we find strength. In that name, though in our times of being sick, we call upon that name to come and to bring healing upon our bodies and peace to our mind and soul, that complete revelation of God, that name. When Jesus came into the coasts of Caesarea and Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Hallelujah. They said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, or Elias and others say, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And he said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood had not revealed it unto thee. But my Father which is in heaven, and I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bound on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Lord, I pray tonight that somebody could receive a complete revelation. Have a deeper understanding of who you are, Jesus. What your name represents and the power of it, Lord. I pray, God, that the evidence would speak to their hearts in Jesus' name. That name of Jesus, the most powerful name that this earth will ever know. That name that has the power to not only affect the natural, but also the supernatural. Proverbs 30 verse 4 says, Who hath ascended up into heaven or descended? Who hath gathered the wind in his fist? Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name and what is his son's name if thou canst tell? I want to tell you his name. His name is Jesus. Amen. All of the Old Testament names of God progressively describe different aspects of God's nature and what he was to his people. Amen. However, none of these names completely revealed who Jesus is or who God was. There is a name, however, that does in Acts 4.12. The Bible says, neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name 
under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. The most important thing God is to you and I is a Savior. Amen. Nothing is more important than the salvation that God offers you. Why? Because the Bible says that condemnation of the judgment of the world already has taken place upon this earth. And what Jesus offers us is a way of escaping this judgment. Amen. That's what salvation means. Jesus means Jehovah salvation or Jehovah is salvation. Jesus is the Greek equivalent to the Hebrew name rendered Yeshua or Joshua. You could even say it that way. The name Jeshua means salvation, according to Matthew 121. Although others carry the name Jeshua, Joshua, or Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ is the only one who is exactly what the name describes. He is the complete revelation of that name. Jesus fulfilled many Old Testament names of God. Jesus is the accumulation of the Old Testament names of God. Jesus is our provider. In the Old Testament, he was Jehovah Jireh. Jesus is our healer, our Jehovah Rapha. He is our banner, our victory, our Jehovah Nisi. He is our Jehovah Mekedesh, amen, our sanctifier. He is Jehovah Shalom, our peacemaker, amen. He is, hallelujah, Jehovah Sabot, the glorious captain of all. He is Jehovah Elion, the most high, amen. Jehovah Ra, the shepherd, amen. Jehovah Asahinu, amen. The maker, amen. The Sikadinu, he is Jehovah, amen. The Lord of righteousness, he is the Shema, an ever-present Lord, according to Matthew 28, 20. In Isaiah 52, verse 6, God promised that his people would know his name. He said, if my people, hallelujah, would humble themselves and pray, amen. You and I must receive this revelation. We must pray for the world that they would receive this divine, amen, revelation of understanding. Zechariah chapter 14, verse 9, his name shall be one, the Bible says. Hallelujah. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day there shall be one Lord and his name one. Isaiah 12, verse 2 through 6, the word or the name Yeshua, Jesus. God is become our salvation. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus will give us water to drink according to John. Jesus said, let him come to me and drink all who are thirsty. Amen. In the book of Luke, unto us is born Jesus or Yeshua, our Savior, Jesus, which is the Christ, the anointed one, our Messiah, the Lord, Jehovah, amen. We see the Lord in all of his oneness. And so his desire, amen, the prayer that Jesus prayed on that day, that you and I have the ability to fulfill, amen. There is a prayer that Jesus spoke that you and I have the ability to fulfill if we could become like Jesus, amen. He said, Father, I pray for them that they would become one as you and I are one. The Lord literally is praying. He's saying, if it's in their heart, if it is in their spirit, that they would unify themselves, that, Lord, he said, Father, let them become one as you and I are one. Amen. My prayer tonight for this Friday night service, amen, is that we would become one, not only with the Lord, but with all those, amen, who need Jesus. You and I, we see the evidence and what it points at is that there is one true God. His name is Jesus. He loved us enough to come and manifest himself upon the earth. 
He took upon himself this old flesh, amen, to give you and I great victory and salvation, amen. The reason that you and I come here tonight and lift up our hands is because of what he has done for us. Why don't we pray one more time as we worship again, amen. Lord, I thank you for all that you are, for the healer that you are, the protector that you are. We pray tonight for our families, God, those who are traveling, those who are visiting, God, those who are sick tonight, those who are hurting, Almighty God, we pray for them, that you would touch and bless their life. But most of all, God, we come tonight to celebrate, to become one with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Let us worship the Lord tonight, amen, in spirit and in truth, in Jesus' name.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, amen, tonight. For our King is worthy, amen. We've been having exciting church, amen, people being touched by the messages, amen, by not only in our church locally, but globally, the Lord is still impacting hearts, changing lives. And so we're excited about what we see God doing, amen, in the global church, not only locally, but globally, to see all the things that the Lord, amen, is doing among all the brothers, amen, in the church, those that are receiving the Spirit of God, the gift of the Holy Ghost, amen. You and I at times must pray and continue to intercede on behalf of others, amen, that God would give them a revelation of understanding, that the Lord would impart unto them, amen, knowledge, wisdom, and a deep truth, a deep love for the things of God. I have seen many years of my life, amen, people who have come, they're touched by the, the presence of the Lord, the Lord begins to bless them in mighty ways. But at times, as time does its thing in the life of every believer, amen, the enemy at times, as I preached, there is a sifting, amen, that takes place. Many times when the Lord truly desires to call and draw you closer unto himself, at times he would transition you and change where you're at, change your atmosphere, change your environment, amen. Almost like the Lord is giving you a transplant, amen. He's taking you out of one soil and planting you in, in another type of soil to give you, amen, the strength and the nutrients that you need to continue on in this journey with the Lord. And I've seen where the Lord has done this for people. They pray and they ask God, Lord, I want to be used. I want to be loved. I want to be recognized and whatever other things that people pray for. And God, at times, out of his love and his concern for us, he answers those prayers in behalf of people so they can believe that he truly is listening and concerned about them. But it seems to me as soon as people have received that prayer, what have kept them up in the middle of the night crying out to God when they, when they have received that answer it seems like all of a sudden they put God to the back burner again amen not understanding that they should put him before everything no matter what amen why because the Lord he'll never leave us nor forsake us amen he said he'll be with us to the very end you may be seated tonight I'm not gonna preach tonight, amen, but I just want to simply tell you that you and I and the people of the world truly need a revelation of who Jesus is. We read here when Jesus came to the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? Here Peter was the one who responded when the question was asked, Peter divinely received something other than those, the onlookers, his brothers, were simply satisfied with just pondering the question. And Peter also was, amen, struck by this question, but something inside of Peter caused him to not only just ponder it, but to respond to the question. Jesus wasn't simply just addressing Peter but all of the disciples, but it was Peter who answered and said, Thou art the Christ. In other words, the Christ, he literally was invoking the title unto Jesus, calling him the anointed one, the Messiah, the one that they had been waiting for. In other words, Peter was saying, Jesus, you are the one the prophets told us would come. You're the prophet that Moses said that God was going to raise up another prophet like unto me. Amen. Peter was pointing to Jesus, giving him those titles and those references. The Messiah, what is the impact 
of what he was saying. Why was that revelation so important for all those who are listening? Amen. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, he also references not by name, but by who he, he would be. Amen. The Messiah. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14 says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. The Bible says, therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Somebody say, that's the evidence. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord takes away the fear of what we believe. Fear of being caught up in some type of false religion. Amen. Like many people have over time and over history. God takes away the fear that we don't have to have confidence in people to give us the interpretation of the word of God, but we can simply open it up. And the Bible says, therefore, the Lord himself, amen, shall give you a sign. God said, I'm going to give you evidence. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel, amen, meaning God with us. The son born of a virgin would be called Emmanuel, God with us, and it's confirmed The Isaiah chapter, amen, is cross-referenced with the book of Matthew. Chapter 1, verse 21, the Bible says, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, amen. What prophet? The prophet Isaiah, hallelujah. We don't have to fear the evidence, amen, can clearly be seen that God is one. The Jew, amen, names reveal the character of an individual. In other words, a child would be born and they would look at that child and something the child would do or perhaps he would encounter, amen, many times that's how they would name that child. And so Isaiah tells us in verse chapter 9, verse 6 and 7, for unto us, A child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice for henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Amen. Again, God ends that verse or those verses with that. Amen. Him taking away the fear. In other words, God is saying, hey, I'm going to do this, not because of what you think or because of your, amen, abilities. I'm, I'm going to do this with or without you. The Bible says the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. The Lord is just letting you know what he's going to do, amen, and he's going to do it. The son would be the father, the prince of peace of, the, of his government and peace. There shall be no end, the throne of David, amen. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, the Mighty God, the everlasting father. You see, we don't say that the son is the father. The Bible says, amen, that the, uh, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, amen. This same son and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. You see, we don't make up, amen, calling Jesus the father. The Bible declares it, amen, whether we want to hear it or not. The oneness of God. The Bible points us and gives us divine revelation. If we are willing to read what it, it says, amen. For unto us a child is born. That's Jesus. Unto us a son is given. That's Jesus. Amen. And he shall be called the everlasting father. The son would be the father. Amen. You see, our concepts and our view of scripture doesn't, amen, come out of the pages that with words that aren't there, amen. But we simply read it and ponder and we think, what is the Lord truly revealing? What is 
he truly saying there, amen. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 23, The book of Jeremiah, chapter 23, verse, amen, 5. The Bible said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that who? He said that you are going to raise up David. The Lord says, I. Amen. He takes away the fear. He says, hey, the evidence, you can trust it because it's not being dictated by you or anyone you know, amen. God said, I, behold the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch. A king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. That righteous branch, amen, that sprout, that descendant of David clearly was pointing to the Messiah, Jehovah, our righteousness, amen. In the book of Matthew, or I mean Micah chapter 5, verse 2. The book of Micah chapter 5, verse 2. The Bible says, but thou, O Bethlehem of Ephratah, thou, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet of thee shall he come forth unto me. That is to be a ruler in Israel whose goings forth have been from old. Where? From everlasting. Amen. We know that Jesus... In the body, the flesh that he was born into did not exist in heaven in eternity, amen. He is not the eternal son of God, amen. He's the begotten son of God. Why? Because Jesus was born, amen. He was born in the body of a baby and became a man. He died upon a cross, amen, that flesh. But him in spirit dwelt for eternity, amen. He would be a ruler whose going forth was from everlasting, the Bible declares for a Jew to say thou art Christ the son of the living God the way Peter said it was to say you are Jehovah the one true God of Israel that is why Jesus replied to Peter this way and he told him upon this he wasn't saying Peter upon you he was talking about the revelation that Peter received he said upon this rock upon that revelation upon what you just said, what you just said, Peter, is part of my foundation. You just spoke part of the cornerstone. You just, you received a revelation that only God can give you. He said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. Amen. You are Jehovah, the one true God of Israel. From this time on, he began to show things to his d disciples in many different ways. Jesus is not just another name. The name of Jesus is the full revelation of God, Jehovah, Yeshua, our Savior. We all know, amen, that there is only one Jehovah, Lord, Adonai, Jesus, Jehovah, Christ, the Messiah, amen. Praise the Lord, amen. You and I don't have to walk around being afraid, amen. The evidence is clear. It speaks, amen, if we have a heart to listen, amen, to what the word of God Reveals to us, amen. You and I must, amen, allow the Lord to fill our hearts with his word. That you and I can have a deep understanding of what it is, amen, that you and I believe. We don't have to stand on the street corners trying to convince anybody about what we teach or what we preach, amen. But we do have to live it, amen. Hallelujah. Although people may never sit down and clearly and fully understand all the ins and outs of the doctrine, amen. One thing they can understand is that Jesus came and died for them upon a cross. On the third day, he rose, amen, that they could receive salvation through the cleansing and the washing of his blood. That is applied through baptism in Jesus' name. The infilling of the Holy Ghost is God giving us the strength and the power that we need to overcome the temptations in our life. That is given with the evidence, amen, of speaking in tongues. And this is, and, amen, this can be found in Scripture, amen. Uh, the evidence of it, it can be found in Scripture. But tonight we want to invite, amen, our young, amen, leader tonight, our, our media team leader, amen, our music leader, I mean, he ain't the music leader, but musician, amen, the drummer, amen. For many years he was hosting, accompanying with his brothers, the P7 Club, there at his local school, amen. And so 
We appreciate this young brother, amen, all that he does for the kingdom of God, all the work and effort that he puts into it. But let's stand to our feet. Let's give the Lord a strong hand clap tonight. And as Brother Matthias preach to us tonight, amen. Hallelujah. God bless you tonight. In Jesus name. Amen. God bless you, church. Who's excited to be in the house of God tonight? Amen. Amen. I want to thank my pastor for giving me this opportunity to speak to y'all tonight. And I want to thank each and every one of you for coming tonight. You could have been anywhere else on a Friday night, but you chose to be in the house of God. Amen. Out of your own free will. Amen. I want to open up with the scripture um, from the NLT. Romans chapter 6, verse 15 through 23. Romans 6, 15 through 23. It says, well then, since God's grace has set us free from the law, does that mean we can go on sinning? Of course not. Don't you realize that you become the slave of whatever you choose to obey? You can be a slave to sin, which leads to death, or you can choose to obey God, which leads to righteous living. Thank God, once you were slaves of sin, but now you wholeheartedly obey this teaching we have given you. Now you are free from slavery to sin, and you have become slaves to righteous living. Because of the weakness of your human nature, I am using this illustration of slavery to help you understand all this. Previously, you let yourselves be slaves to impurity and lawlessness, which led ever deeper into sin. Now you must give yourselves to be slaves to righteous living so that you will become holy. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the obligation to do right. And what was the result? You are now ashamed of the things you used to do, things that end in eternal doom. But now you are free from the power of sin and have become slaves of God. Now you do these things that lead to holiness and result in eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. I want to minister on this subject tonight for the love of freedom. Amen. If we could bow our heads and pray tonight, amen. Lord Jesus, I pray, Lord God, that you would anoint my lips, Lord Jesus, to speak your word, Lord God, to spread, Lord Jesus, your truth, Lord God. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would use me, Lord Jesus, to preach your word, Lord Jesus, tonight, Lord God. You are worthy, Jesus. You are worthy, God. In your name I pray, amen. Amen. You may be seated. How many of you in this room love living in a free nation? Amen. Amen. I know I do. <laughs> I love being able to go where I want to go, talk about what I want to talk about, believe what I want to believe, do what I want to do. Amen. In this nation especially, freedom is a big part of our culture. Us as Americans you take pride in knowing we are free and why we are free. Amen. Did you know that our, late, our nation has lost over 1.3 million soldiers fighting for freedom? Amen. Why is this thing called freedom so important? Amen. Well, in order to understand why freedom is important, we must first understand the opposite of being free. Amen. According to Webster's Dictionary, some antonyms or opposites of freedom are captivity, enslavement, and imprisonment. Amen. Many of us have never experienced being imprisoned or being uh, held captive, but those that have experienced that have a greater love for freedom than most of us ever will, amen? The other day, me and my family were watching a movie about a German general who worked for Hitler but was secretly part of a group that wanted to kill Hitler, amen? This was based on a true event. They made plans to plant a bomb in the meeting room a lot of Nazi generals, including Hitler, would soon gather. Once the bomb went off, they had made plans to arrest the Nazi senator and take back all of Germany piece by piece. They carried out with their plans, not knowing that Hitler had survived the bombing. Hitler soon took back his army and had the treasonous generals killed. Now, Germany remembers these generals as freedom fighters, amen? People that sacrifice everything to see others free. Amen. And I've come to tell you that just as these people laid down their lives to see their country free, God laid down his life to see us free. Amen. In Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14, 
It says, because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood, the son also became flesh and blood. For only as a human being could he die, and only by dying could he break the power of the devil who had the power of death. Only in this way could he set free all who have lived their lives as a slave to the fear of dying. Amen. Aren't you glad tonight that God laid down his life so we could be free? Amen. You ought to be excited tonight about our freedom that we have earned through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Amen. It was through the blood that we were set free. Amen. In Romans chapter 6 verse 17 it says, Thank God. Once you were slaves of sin, but now you wholeheartedly obey this teaching we have given you. Amen. You used to be slaves to sin, but now you are slaves of righteousness. Amen. In John chapter 8, verse 36, it says, So if the Son sets you free, you are truly free. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. In Titus chapter 2, verse 14. It says, he gave his life to free us from every kind of sin, to cleanse us, and to make us his very own people. Amen. Jesus laid down his life so he would see us free. Amen. Amen. If we could go back to Romans 6, verse 15 through 16. Amen. Jesus died to give us freedom, but we cannot abuse the liberty he has given us. Amen. In Romans chapter 6, verse 15 through 16, it says, Don't you realize that you become the slave of whatever you choose to obey? You can be a slave to sin, which leads to death, or you can choose to obey God, which leads to righteous living. Thank God once you were slaves of sin, but now you wholeheartedly obey this teaching we have given you. Amen. Amen. The other day, again, (laughs) I saw a video of this young lady that had been raised Amish her whole life. In her effort to leave the Amish people, she believed it included no longer having faith in Christ. That same day she left the Amish village, she went to go paint her nails and put makeup on and other worldly things. Amen. Amen. And many's problem, many people's problems in today's generation is once they experience freedom for the first time, they don't know how to handle it. Amen. When we become free from sin, that doesn't mean we get to do whatever we want. Amen. In 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 13. Through 17, it says, For the Lord's sake, submit to all human authority, whether the king as head of state or the officials he has appointed. For the king has sent them to punish those who do wrong and to honor those who do right. It is God's will that your honorable lives should silence those ignorant people who make foolish accusations against you. For you are free, yet you are God's slaves. So don't use your freedom as an excuse to do evil. Respect everyone and love the family of believers. Fear God and respect the king. Amen. Yes, we are spiritually free in Christ, but we must continue to pick up our cross daily. Amen. And crucify our flesh. Amen. Freedom is the very thing that many people long for, but many do not know how to be set free. Amen. Well, of course, we know that it is through the reading of the Bible and going to church, but it is much deeper than that. Amen. In James chapter 1, amen, James chapter 1, verse 22, it says, But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. For if you listen to the world and don't obey It is like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself, walk away, and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. Amen. The Bible clearly says that we cannot just read the Bible, but we have to obey it. Amen. 
we've got to stop fooling ourselves and start wholeheartedly obeying God's word. Amen. If we want to truly be set free, we must follow God's word. Amen. If we could go to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3 verse 7. It says, you used to do these things when your life was still part of this world. But now is the time to get rid of anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander, and dirty language. Don't lie to each other, for you have stripped off your old sinful nature and all its wicked deeds. Put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your creator and become like him. In this new life, it doesn't matter if you are Jew or a Gentile, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbaric, uncivilized, slave or free. Christ is all that matters, and he lives in all of us. Amen. As we stand tonight, I wonder if we could lift our hands and pray for our friends and pray for our family that they would be set free tonight. Amen. If there's anyone that God has placed on your heart tonight that you know needs to be set free, I pray that we would bind together and help free them in Jesus' name tonight. Amen. Lord Jesus, we pray, Lord God, for our friends, Lord Jesus, that they would be set free in your name, Lord God, that you would draw them near to you, Lord Jesus, draw them to your house, Lord God, to bring you, Lord Jesus, glory, Lord God, to bring you honor, Lord Jesus. We pray, Lord God, for our family, Lord Jesus, that you would set them free from any bondage, Lord God, from any sickness, Lord Jesus. You are worthy, Lord Jesus. We worship you, Lord God. Lord Jesus, set our cities free, Lord God. Set our families free, Lord Jesus. Set our nation free, Lord Jesus. You are worthy, you are worthy, Lord Jesus. You are worthy, Jesus. You are worthy, Lord God. There's nobody like you, Lord Jesus. We worship you, God. We worship you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. For the love of freedom, amen. What price are we willing to pay for our loved ones who are still held captive, amen? What are we willing, amen, to battle, amen, against? How far are we willing to engage the enemy, amen, for our lost, our loved ones, amen, who are still out there, amen, on the battlefield, trying to find their way back home, amen. You know, earlier, when I was talking to my wife yesterday, man, she said something very powerful. She said, uh, she said, I found a title to a message, amen. And I said, oh, yeah, what's it going to be called? She said, well, I was driving, and she said, and I got close to the area where it's called Colorado City. I said, yeah, I was, that was one of the places I was. And she said, yeah, I know. I, I remember when I seen that name. It was one of the places where I was incarcerated at, amen. And she said that as she was getting close, you know, to West Texas out there, that when she was driving, she said there came up a little town. It was called Eden, Texas. Eden, like, like in the Bible, Eden. She said, did you know in Eden it has one of the biggest prisons? I said, no, I didn't know that. She said, yeah, it's like a, some kind of detention center or something. She said, but as I was reading it, she just said, I started shaking my head. She said, a prison in Eden. Amen. And I was thinking about that, what she said today, you know. And it's true how the Lord, amen, he gives us promises, amen. And his promises don't fail either. He enables us. To live, amen, we know that Adam and Eve started off in Eden, amen, but they messed up, amen. And you and I, we are still almost caught up in the same predicament, amen. This earth that we live in is a type of Eden, amen. But if you're not careful, you can become like Adam and Eve. And although God is not ushering you out of Eden yet, you can create a prison there, amen. To where all of a sudden God's blessings can become a curse on us, amen, especially when it deals with matters of this world that we're living in. You have to understand how the Bible says that the weapons of warfare, amen, are not carnal, amen. And so there's these things that we battle against and with are spiritual. We have to have a deeper understanding of how the enemy is going to 
try to infiltrate and mislead us and misguide us, amen. He's always going to use the things of this world, amen, to attract us like a fish. When he sees that shiny thing rattling in the, in the, in the, in the water, amen, it has to come and inspect it and see what's going on. And at times, its instinct is to attack it, amen, because it, it, to them, that flash, that, that glimmer, amen, it, to them, it, it's like a fish that's been wounded, and what it sees in its mind, it triggers and says, look, there's, there's lunch, an easy lunch. And so sometimes we got to be careful with the things that we look at that, that are shiny, amen. Because the enemy, not only will he use the increase to cause us to be deceived, but he'll also use debt, amen, to cause you to be bound. And here's the catch. In order to have more outgo, in other words, outgo, in order to have more out, go, you got to have more in, come. Amen. Hallelujah. If not, you're going to be living in debt. Hallelujah. And that type of debt going after the things of this world will cause you to become very bitter. And it will cause you to feel as if God doesn't have divine favor on your life. And there's times when God, yes, he does to have divine favor but you have to learn how to handle that favor correctly, amen. Because all of a sudden, amen, you're, you're going to find yourself when God finally has made you and prepared you ready to, to go forward in ministry. Those are the little things that if you don't have them right in your life, they're going to hold you back. Because when you see that living for God and, and, and living for God on a, on a higher level, it's not because... You have more income, it's, more, it's because you have more outgo, amen. In other words, whatever God places, you're willing to release it to see God's hand and his flow begin to happen in your life, amen. And until you come to a place with surrendering to the Lord that way, it's going to be a battle, amen. It's going to be a struggle, it's going to seem like, because we're going to feel like if letting go is how the Lord wants me to live, but my instinct, my, my mind is saying, don't let go of it. Hold on to it as long as you can. But see, that's us living by fear instead of by faith. Amen. I've learned to just live by faith. Let God take care of everything else. Amen. All the stress, all the worry, all the how we're going to do all of this stuff. You know what? Just give it to God. Amen. Just keep living for the Lord. Be joyful. Be content. Be happy. But again, what I'm telling you, don't. Live above your means, amen. Don't let every shiny new thing that comes out cause you to, to be d distracted. Because you know what happens? You accumulate so much stuff, you have to focus on all that stuff. And what does that do? It takes, you, it takes away your time from other things. And all of a sudden, you have so much stuff, you can't focus on just one thing anymore. And guess what? That thing that you used to take care of and cherish is, is not being... Uh, taken care of anymore. Why? Because you have so much, amen. That can become something that's not good either in our life. Amen. Some of us have to be careful when we, we're concerned more about our guitar than we are, we are our car, amen. That's a problem, amen. That guitar ain't going to get you a job, amen, but the car will, amen. And so we have to learn to use Use our minds, amen, and allow the Lord to, to help us to be blessed. And I'm not picking on Mikey. I'm just saying, using that him as an example, that, that don't, get, don't get things twisted, amen, in your life, amen. And don't be so concerned about your car, amen, that, you know what I mean, every time it's time to play your guitar, you only have one string on it, amen. You know what I'm saying? Like, these are the things that, for your own life as a young person that's desiring to be involved in ministry, you need to step back at times and analyze, step back and say, okay, what am I doing with what God has given me, with what he's blessing me with? And at times in your walk with God, you got to analyze those things. Do it for the benefit of your future and for the future of your ministry and your family. It's a very deep subject, and I can give you scripture of how. All of these things are connected, but that's for a different time. But I know that it takes time to teach all those things, but I'm just 
dropping nuggets here and there so that way you can get these things embedded in your thoughts, amen, that going forward there's, there's things in our life when we step into different levels of life of teenagehood and then to adulthood that there's different priorities that we have to start making and things that we have to let go of, you know, that big collection of cars and toys and all that. Sometimes you got to let that go and, and concentrate on other things. Not to say that you can't collect things. Yeah, you collect it, but not to the place where don't collect and you start to neglect. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Take care of what you have. Appreciate what you have. Amen. Learn to use what you have. Learn to master what you have. Amen. And then you can make the decision and say, okay, you know, I've done all I could with this and it's time to move on. But those are the things that we must pray for also. And I point these things out because I can feel it in my spirit. These things that we don't like to talk about because it is, it's, it's, it's a matter of pride. But as a pastor, I've been through these things. I know what I'm telling you, amen. But praise the Lord, amen. Let's bow our heads. Lord, we thank you for this night that you have given us. A Friday night, Lord. Beautiful night. We thank you, Lord, for the weather, God, that is changing all around us. But we pray, God, for the country, Lord, of Israel, for all the Palestinian people too, Lord, who are affected, God, the innocent children, Lord, that are being hurt and affected by all the things that are going on. We pray, God, that you would give them a divine revelation, all of Israel and all of the other people that are surrounding them that are trying to do evil to one another, God. Let them, Lord, let their eyes be open. But I see the scripture for what it says, God. You're taking them through persecution to cause them to cry out to you, Lord. It is divinely, Lord, ordered by your will, God, that you, Lord, take them, Lord, and sift them, almighty God, that they may have a revelation of who Jesus is, the one true God, the one true Messiah. Lord, we know that the second return will be a rescue mission that you're coming back on to save the nation of Israel. But until that moment comes, God, we will prepare and we will plan, God, and we will keep our ears open, God, and our hearts and eyes alert, God, to everything that is going on in the world today. We thank you, Lord, because we know, Lord, what the scripture reveals to us and you cause us to see clearly, Lord, the things that are happening all around us, Lord. And because of that, Lord, we're able to operate and minister and live with faith, God, and not fear. I thank you, Lord, for everything that you are doing, Lord, and we pray again for the nation of Israel, God, and all those, Lord, who are being affected by the things that are happening over there. We pray for all the brothers and sisters who are representing the end times ministry, God, that are there. Lord, we pray that you would bring them back, God, safely, almighty God, and everyone else, Lord, that is over there, the missionaries, God, and those that are there ministering, Lord. We pray for them, God, that you would Protect them, God, and shield them, almighty God. We pray for our country, Lord, that we, Lord, would stand for Israel, Lord, and to get involved, especially in times such as this, to let the world know, Lord, that we are still, Lord, a beacon of hope, Lord, for the hurting. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us, Lord, to be here tonight, and we pray for our families in the name of Jesus. Can everybody say amen? Remember, be blessed, amen. Don't be stressed. Let God take care of the rest, and he truly will. We see you here Sunday morning, amen. Sunday morning is All Nations Sunday, so come, amen. I don't know if we're going to have food or anything, but nobody planned it. But if anybody's listening live, amen, well, you could bring something, amen. Praise the Lord. But uh, continue to pray for my wife, amen, as she makes her way home. I know she's busy right now, but we just want to pray for them, amen, that God would bless them and their fellowship in Jesus' name. God bless you, amen. Amen. What a powerful word of God we just received. Amen. In Psalms 122 verse 1, it says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. I pray that our church has impacted your lives. And if you would like to support us, please visit www.jesuschurch.online. As always, be blessed, don't be stressed, and let God take care of the rest. And he will. In Jesus' name.